Welcome to the Business Behind the Scene podcast with Francesca Moy, where we talk all about real business problems, real solutions, and getting actual results in your business. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode number 65 of this podcast. Now, I wanted to start with thanking so many of you for all the love that you sent me from the last few podcasts saying, oh my God, FM, this is so raw and honest. I've got a few interviews from this podcast and I'm just so grateful for all you guys' feedback because a lot of time when you pour your heart into something and you like go completely honest and completely raw, you just sort of cringe going, oh, I really hope that it's going to work. I really hope that people are going to see what I'm trying to say here. I hope that it doesn't come up as a victim or, you know, the wrong way. And it's still very, very nerve wracking for me to share stuff um, when I'm being I feel that I'm always on the edge of vulnerability, but sometimes I'll really jump in and a couple of episodes ago, I know that you guys are number 63, I believe, you guys were like, OMG, this is next level. So thank you so much for your feedback. Um, it's my intention to bring more of those episodes into it because this is called Business Behind the Scenes. So we want to make sure that we do show you the true behind business. And today we're talking about something could have be coming and the best most perfect way because listen listen so I have catch up with a friend of mine this weekend and he said Francesca I need your professional services and I'm thinking okay you might need some social media advice I don't know so I <laughs> we caught up and we were chatting and he said I'm completely stuck I'm completely stuck I, I I can't get myself out there in business I don't know what's going on and I love the fact that you know people are nowadays open to just admit that, hey, this is happening to me. And I'm using this example because I get this a lot. I get this a lot from other people saying to me, I'm stuck. Um, I don't know how you get all this stuff done. I don't, I don't know how you get motivated. And I just wanted to let you know that that's not how I feel about me. I don't feel that I've got all my shit together. I don't feel that I've, I, I'm super motivated. I don't feel that I get so much done. I always think the opposite. I think, oh my gosh, why don't I get as much done? Why can I get more? What? I'm also thinking that. So, and we all have different standards and different um, levels of what we're happy with. And you, you might have, um, settle for a lower standard so you just need to re all you need to do is raise your standards but anyway it was a really good conversation because we had a chat about you know how how you know have you been successful in other things have you ever procrastinated in something have you ever you know got stuck in something and find your way around it so it was really good chat because we were talking about how in exercise, we, we just go, all right, well, I, I don't want to wake up. I don't want to uh, go to exercise. And I find that, you know, I knew that if I didn't do it, I had to find a way around it. So what happened that um, his strategy, which I really loved, um, was, well, I'm going to trick my brain. I'm going to say, okay, you can go back to bed. If once you get to the place, to the gym, then you can go back to bed, right? If you go to the gym and you really don't feel like exercising, then let's go back to bed. And guess what? When you get all the way to the gym, then obviously you feel like exercising. You're there now, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, well, there you go. You already have a strategy for your brain to, you know, for you to get out of your procrastination in exercising. That is the same thing in business. So if your brain would tell you that you need another course or another certification or another something before you can be successful how about you tell your brain okay we're gonna do this thing that we're not gonna take action first and then if i still feel like i need a certification then i can do it after and literally it was like oh my gosh it's so simple but yet it's just so amazing so today we're literally talking about schedule and i was about to share with you my schedule and how I, I do it, but it's not about what I do, it's, it's about how I trick my brain into doing it, how I trick my brain into be disciplined, how I trick my brain to get shit done without procrastinating. <laughs> so that is the secret of really successful people. It's, like not, it's not about what I do, it's not the how, it's about what I, how do I train, how actually it is, it is a how, but it's not like people think that they need the hell like you know put the alarm at that time like if you wake up at 5 50 it's perfect if you wake up at 6 everything's gonna fall apart that's not the truth the how you trick your brain into actually following um what we were talking about so i just i'm beyond um excited for, for to share this because 
I also want to show you that even I, at times, sabotage it. I know what works. I know what's the routine that makes me be more productive. And yet I sabotage it a lot of the time. And it, it's, it's what the brain does. So what I've done is that I worked out a way for me to tell my brain, okay, well, we're going to go the other way. We're not going to do this this time. We're going to do something else. So I want to start with the morning. So I don't have an alarm anymore. I used to have an alarm, but the thing is I noticed that when I need an alarm is because I haven't followed my routine the night before, right? So only when I haven't followed the routine that I'm before, that's when I actually put an alarm on. But when I follow the routine, I don't need an alarm because my body just wakes up automatically about five and then I um, I can stay in bed for another like half an hour to an hour and then I wake up um, and I love to be able to like have the extra hour sleeping. Um, it's what my body loves. I like to be able to, you know, wake up at five and go, oh, I still got an hour. That's fantastic. Um, that really set me up for success. So I'm not snoozing because my, my um, goal is to open my eyes at six o'clock, right? That's, that's my goal. It's by six, I want to be up and running. I want to go, I want to get going. So if I wake up at five and I go, oh, this is so good. I've got another hour. I use that, right? I use that as success. If I wake up at six, that's when I don't have any privilege of staying in bed. If I wake up at six, I have to get up. I have to go it's happening, I get moving and I don't think about it. Cause if I let my brain think about, oh, I'm still tired. Oh, could I just sleep in? If I do that, then all my brain wants to do is to sabotage our, our plan and actually stay in bed. So I have this thing that if I wake up before six, I'm allowed, I'm allowed to, to stay in bed until six. If I wake up at six, I have to get going. Now, there is two things that I do in the morning. Sometimes I pick up my phone and I put a meditation on and that is beautiful because I just, you know, start the day with a beautiful meditation and, and I don't necessarily stay still. I just, you know, I usually listen to Esther Hicks um, and I walk around the house listening to Esther, which I really love. But sometimes I put it... <laughs> um, like in bed and I just listen if it's before six I put it in bed and I just listen to it while I'm in bed sometimes I just put it in you know as I'm walking around the house I put my instant on and I just you know cruise around the house do my little bits and pieces that I need to do in the morning my uh, getting my water getting my um you know I got some natural pills that I take I get that I get olive oil ready for a walk and just you know I put my gym gear on I just get ready um I've got like a clean my teeth routine. I've got like, you know, um, some sort of things that I do in the morning. So there's quite a lot that I love, enjoy doing uh, in the morning to get myself ready. And this is where the day is a success. When I pick up the phone and I actually start to do, go on Facebook and Slack and start working, that's when my day that's when I get overwhelmed. That's when I get the feeling of overwhelm, anxious, and I just can't stay still. I can't just be. I just feel rushed and I feel like I don't I shouldn't be going for a walk. I shouldn't go to the gym. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I should just go back to work. And that is not a good start of the day. And yet I still sometimes do it. So it's um interesting how our brain love to self-sabotage it's just part of it so again it's about being disciplined i'll be able to say no to that and then i'm i mean don't give yourself a time because i also sometimes don't and i'm sure that even tony robbins sometimes you know let himself down which is okay it's okay the thing is is being aware of it and be able to change it and be able to start to you know 90 percent of the time you're disciplined 10 percent of the time you're not that's okay so after that, I take Holly Boy for a walk, and during the walk, I usually have a uh, call my mum. That's a routine I talk to every day to my mum. Uh, just a good morning, good night for her. She lives in Italy, and and then off I go for my for my day, and then I listen to a podcast. I often use the time um, I walk with Holly to listen to a podcast at two times, so it's fast, so I can actually listen to the whole thing. And then I get to um, I get home and I cook my breakfast. Um, 
or I go to Pilates, depends on the day. Four times a week, I go to Pilates. Sometimes I just go straight to cook breakfast. It really depends. And during breakfast, I listen to another podcast. So I usually try to alternate. I'd listen to a mindset relationship podcast and I listen to business mindset podcast. So it really depends on, I try to alternate so that I just don't listen to one thing all day. Um, so by time that is uh, time for me to start putting makeup on and have a shower and all of that, I have already listened to two podcasts. Um, then I have my two podcasts and a meditation. So that's already where my brain has already been filled with positivity and with things that are going to be improving my day. So then after that, I often listen to another podcast or, uh, and usually that third one while I put makeup on is an actual marketing strategies. Um, or some other people that I look up, look up to, or, you know, I just literally pretty much use that as a study time. So again, by now it's not even nine o'clock and I already listened to three podcasts of three different things and one meditation. And I went for a walk and I did my exercise and I had my breakfast. So it's by nine o'clock, I've already done my, my time with, you know, setting myself up for success for the day. So then I drive to work. So I usually I'm at work about 9.30 um, to the office. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, office that we have created for ourselves. And I get there. I say hi to everybody, but I'm not really much of a talker. I don't really chat too much um, to everybody. I just, I'm just on a mission. So then I go into my office and I check my calendar because I need to understand what's going on. And I just get started. Most of the time I do have a chat with my uh, operational manager and with Amy, we chat a lot about what's going on for the day, uh, a little bit of strategy around the business, money, uh, paying bills and stuff like that, all the, you know, boring stuff. And then I'm going off and my calendar, I just follow my calendar. Everything is in my calendar. I just do it. There's no procrastination. There's no, you know, if something doesn't, it takes more time, it just moves to next week. Like we just have such a good schedule and we just stick to it, which is really cool. Then after the, um, the day it's finished. Um, I usually work at the office about three days a week. Mondays, I usually do it from home and I, um, the days that I'm at the office, I usually work long at day. So I start about 9.30 and I usually am in the office until around six-ish. Um, when people leave at five, I get an hour to get smashed and do a lot of stuff by myself. I can concentrate and it's really good. So then I have a day off during the week that I use that as networking day or catch-up day or study day or relaxing day, depending on the, what I need every week. Uh, I use that day for my you know, beauty day. So I'll do massages, my hair, makeup, whatever I need to be doing, my nails. Um, and so I use that day as a day of uh, pampering or a day is relaxing or a day of studying or a day of catch up with friends and um, colleagues. So it's a really good day. It's usually on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Um, and then the weekend comes. So this is pretty much my routine and, and I love when I listen my uh, coach. Um, I love, 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 love hearing their routine. So anyway, at about six o'clock, I come home. I take Olive Boy for a beautiful half an hour walk. So we walk twice a day for half an hour each time. And then, and while I walk, I usually, that's my catch up time. So I don't listen to a podcast on the way back. Uh, this is where I catch up with a, a friend or my mom or my, or my dad, or, you know, just on the phone, just catching up with someone, just, um, you know, connecting. Then I come home and I have beautiful early dinner. I like to I like to have dinner at six thirty, um, and then after dinner I come into my study room in my office and I in the in my house um, and I've got an office in my house as well. And I play piano and I love that. I play piano for about an hour, sometimes two, and then about eight thirty I try to be ready to go to bed. Uh, so Ollie boy needs to go to do his last. Wee oui, wee oui for the day, <laughs> take him outside, go all go, and he goes for like his little round the corner, he just goes around for a bit and then he comes back and then we go off to bed. So then I'm in bed by 8.40 and I read my book and then I read my book about 
until I'm tired. I try not to look at the can even at the time. So sometimes it will be half an hour, sometimes it will be 40 minutes, sometimes it will be an hour. Um, this week I've been addicted to this amazing book and I can't put it down. So one night, it was midnight when I actually went to bed. I was like, no, it's too late. But at the end of the day, if I'm enjoying the book, um, that is totally fine. So the day after, I was struggling to be up by six though. So this is why I love to, you know, usually I'm tired enough where I read half an hour to 45 minutes. I, uh, my eyes start to hurt and I start to get sleepy. So then I go to bed. So about 9, 30, 10 is when I'm actually sleeping. So this is me, my routine. Now in the weekend, I usually am not very good at planning things because I'm always uh, aware that I might be very tired and exhausted for the week. So I usually like to be a last minute type of person. I don't really schedule much of my week weekends. Um, I do have a one long weekend a month that I try to go away with a girlfriend and just really enjoy the time away. Um, and the other time I'm sort of around here, I read, I study, uh, I love going to see houses for sale because I'm into real estate and I'm really excited about my future investments as well that I'm making in real estate. So I like to go and have a look at a couple of houses in the weekend and catching up with friends. I don't have a party style of life at all. I don't drink alcohol most of the time. Um, maybe once a month I go out with some friends and have a couple of drinks, but it doesn't really sit well with my body. Uh, I've been detoxing for so long that my body doesn't really enjoy any naughty food. <laughs> so I tend not to have it because I don't enjoy the after, how I feel after. So yeah, I, I, a lot of people don't believe that, but I don't have um, a crazy lifestyle. I actually am quite an introvert in my weekends. I love to spend time in by myself. Uh, I love reading. I love relaxing. Uh, I do also love watching movies in the weekend, uh, usually real stories. I love to, um, you know, study and see what, what happens in people's brains. So this is me. This is my week. This is my routine. This is what happens in my life. And this is where I know for fact that when I follow my routine, I am super productive. I am on top of my games. I am achieving stuff. I am grateful. I'm feeling all the beautiful feels. When I don't, when I start, you know, in the morning procrastinating on doing things that I know that are not going to serve me, I, you can tell. You can tell how my mood changes and you can tell how I'm, I'm more irritable. Uh, it's really interesting how, um, it's a ripple effect from the morning, the morning, the moment you wake up, the moment that you set the intention for the day and the moment that you go. So I love um, studying other people. I love watching my mentors and what they do and what the schedule is. And I've tried different things. And I know for sure that when I move away from my routine, I am not at my best. So uh, it's really important for me to go back to my routine. And this is where I also have in the last few years doubted that routine is the best way to go about it. Cause that's when <laughs> in my routine, there is, there isn't time for a man. And so that's why I was like, Oh no, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get into having a family and have a man if I keep having such a strict routine? But the thing is, I know for sure that when I find the right person, we can, um, compromise and find time for everything. So I need to keep going and trusting that we are at the same place, at the right place, the right time. Um, and I don't listen to what other people tell me because actually that thought it wasn't mine, it was someone else's. Uh, you're too busy for a man. You're never going to be able to find someone if you keep having the strict routine. That is not the truth. So thank you for your feedback, but no. <laughs> I'm going to have the routine because that makes me feel good. That makes me feel alive. That makes me aligned with who I am. I forgot to say that um, once or twice a week, I usually go to salsa dancing and that is my way to um, connect. I haven't been doing that for the last month or so because my back has been really sore, but usually I do. So there we go. This is me, my routine. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love to hear uh, what is your routine, what's your schedule. I actually put a post up there uh, the other day asking people what do they do when they drive, if they listen to a podcast, if they listen to an audiobook, or if they, um, you know, stay in silent or sing along, what do they do? Um, and I love to watch the reaction of a lot of people and most business owners are always doing. Not many people stay in silent, not many people stay still. So it's very interesting how... Um, yeah, to watch people's brain, to watch what people do in their spare time or whenever they have a gap. So 
Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, thank you everybody for listening. And again, thank you so much for your feedback. Uh, if you are loving this podcast, I would love you guys to leave a review. Um, I'm really, we're about to list to reach 5,000 listeners and it's just beyond. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you next week. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, then you have to come to check out our Facebook group, Workshop Secrets for Coaches. It's a community of over 9,500 coaches that are ready to boom their business by running workshops. They are stuck in one-on-one coaching and they're ready to start to go one-to-many. So if you are one of those coaches, then you have to join us. I look forward to see you there. And hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave me a review to win a ticket to one of my workshops. I look forward to see you there.